Welcome to RD Works Learning Lab. There's uh, some of you out there that seem to think that I'm an expert. I have to hasten to add that I'm old, I'm grey, I'm fat, I'm ugly, but an expert I am not. And this is an amazing little retirement venture for me. I'm enjoying every minute of it, not least because it gets me away from tackling the big to-do list that my wife has got. As a demonstration of how non-expert I am, I've made a big mistake and this session is all about trying to prevent you guys from making the same mistake. This graph that you see here is a result of many hours of work um, with my calorimeter. Now this plots the relationship between the number that you dial in, i.e. the percentage power, and the actual power that you get out in usable energy. This is a very very important graph it reveals a serious fraud on the part of virtually everybody that's selling you a Chinese laser cutting machine. Now that's a pretty bold statement but we went out and bought a 50 watt laser machine but in effect what we really bought was a 40 watt laser machine because if you take a look at this graph you'll see that after 60 percent power which is approximately 40 watts, you get virtually no more power regardless of how much you wind the dial up. Again, let me just go back and explain the principle behind this. If you were a person selling a laser tube, you would like to sell a 50 watt laser tube. So you run that tube as hard as you can with excess current to get 50 watts out of it. And you can prove categorically that it is a 50 watt laser tube. But the problem is, if you run it at those currents for any serious amount of time, the tube will self-destruct. So there is the fraud. Essentially, we can't use the 50 watts that's claimed for this tube. We can only use 40 watts. So the aim of today's session is to generate a very simple set of tests. So this is not only a set of tests that you can use to check a new machine, this is a set of tests that puts down a benchmark for you so that at some stage in the future when you've got dirty lenses, dirty mirrors, uh, a dodgy laser of some sort, you can go back and check the performance of your machine against a datum. Before we start today's test, it is essential that you get yourself a piece of thick acrylic. Thick acrylic can be incredibly expensive to buy but here is a means of getting a small piece of thick acrylic that is beautifully prepared and absolutely perfect for this particular application. If you go onto eBay and you're in the US, here's an example of what you can buy. Now here in the UK it gets even better. We can buy them incredibly cheaply and free postage. Well here we are in familiar territory and today I can assure you, you will never write a simpler program than this. We'll go to our line tool and we will draw a vertical line. And then we'll draw another vertical line. And we'll draw a third vertical line. And that's it. That's the program. But we're not quite finished yet. We've got a few complications to come across. But what we're going to do is, first of all, we will change this line to green. We'll leave this second line black and we'll change this third line to red. Now I think here we shall find one of the inadequacies of RD works. The first bit is very simple. We're going to choose these alignment tools where we align left and we we'll click on any one of them. And there we go. They're beautifully aligned now vertically. But there is no mechanism for joining the lines end to end. So now we've got to do some work up here with these little windows. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to set the green line to 10 millimeters long in Y. Then we're going to set the red line to 10 millimeters long in Y. 
we're then going to set this black line to 6 millimeters long in Y. Let's for convenience move them all into an X dimension of 30 millimeters. We'll just marquee this top one and we'll move it to a known position in Y and say 35. So we've set the center at 35 so the end of it is at 40 and we have got a line here which is 6 millimeter long so that means the center of this is going to be at 43 millimeters in Y. So we can reposition this one to 43 millimeters in Y and that will join it up perfectly. This is where the mathematician in you needs to be pretty keen. Where the center of this last line has got to go in relation to the end of that line. Well here we are at 10, 16, 16 plus 5 is 21, so it's 21 on top of our first dimension there which as you can see is 30 millimeters down. If we set the center of this one to 51, we've achieved our end result. <clears throat> Before we leave the program we need to set the layer parameters. Now the first thing we've got to do is to make sure that we move the black layer, drag the black layer down to below the green layer like that because the black layer is our working layer. The green layer is basically a dead layer but we have to force the laser machine to believe that it's doing something because we don't want the machine to go into its rapid traverse mode. We want to actually do everything at a nice steady pace. So what we're going to do is going to go into the green layer and we're is output yes speed now I've got the speed set to one millimeter per second so we've got a 10 millimeter long traverse length at one millimeter per second so it's going to take 10 second to cut the green line and we're going to set the power to one percent now one percent power is not even going to fire the laser so effectively what we've got is a nice controlled approach to our black work area. We'll go to the red area next and we'll do the same thing with that. Is it output? Yes. Speed, millimetres per second, is going to be one. Is it blowing? Yes. Process cut? Yes. And the power is going to be zero. Sorry, it's going to be one percent. We can't set anything less than one percent on the machine. And we're going to get rid of the through mode and we're going to say OK. And now we're going to work on the black piece, which is the vital part of this exercise. Is it output? Yes. Speed? One millimetres a second. Blowing? Yes. Cut? Yes. And for the first part that we're going to do, we will try 10% power. So we set the power to 10% and turn the laser through mode off. OK. And that's our program written. That might seem a very silly program, but wait and see how powerful it is. Right, all you need to do is just uh, save that to a U file and uh, we'll meet up at the machine. OK, well here we are at the machine again. The first thing you'll note is that I have removed the nozzle and the lens. Now, there is no point in doing this work until you have one of these, or at least a fairly thick piece of acrylic. It probably needs to be at least 12 to 15 millimetres thick. So this is an essential part of this test, as you'll see. Now there's a little bit of preparatory work that you're going to have to do. You're going to have to hunt around for a piece of metal. Aluminium, steel, this is copper, but brass. It needs to be probably at least one mil thick, and ideally something like this, which is one and a half mil thick, because it needs to be quite stiff and rigid. And then you'll need to put a bend in it, like this. Now my bend is probably about two inches and it's probably about four inches wide. When you look closely at your machine you'll probably find that you've got a bracket of some sort here which attaches this head to the x-axis at the back here. Now this little piece of metal here that's hanging down is great because it means I've got somewhere that I can crudely attach my shelf to. Okay now that I've clamped up my uh, bracket on there what I'm going to do is a couple of things. First of all I'm going to move the head, so I'm going to drive it to zero that way, zero that way, just to make sure that the bracket is not hitting anything. This is the block of perspex that I'm going to be using 
and you need to make sure that the perspex itself doesn't hit anything. So we need to make sure that we're going to drive the head away a little bit in that axis and a little bit away in that axis and that everything should be clear and that will be the zero zero for our program provided we press the button now which says origin. So when I press a reset now you'll see that it'll go to zero zero and then it'll come back to my origin and that's the safe position to start the test. I'm just hunting around for a, a thin piece of perspex which I'm going to drop onto the table there so we will actually just do a pulse test like that and that will tell me where the beam is going to land. I want to put a line on there just check that again and that should be approximately yeah give or take a, a millimetre or two that's in line with the burn. I'm just cleaning my top mirror. Now you'll see what I mean about smoke coming up onto the mirror. So I'm just going to put some isopropyl alcohol here and clean this mirror. So that's a good example why you wouldn't let normally a flame develop because it would smoke up the lens. Okay now I've marked the bottom of my block with some lines that are about eight or nine millimeters apart. Right so we've got mode three loaded so the first thing we shall have to do is file, enter, enter, and then we can come down to here and we can press enter again and that will bring the program up over here and you'll see that we've got the black that we can edit. So with the ZU button we can come down to this window here and the first window at the moment is set at 20%. So we will actually change that to 10 percent and then we'll step down to there and we'll do the same thing again we'll change that to 10 percent and then we press enter enter <coughs> so the job is nearly done now so we do file and then we need to come across from here to this column with this key and then we're going to step down to run if i turn the pump on we've got some air coming out there Okay, now we know that we didn't get any burn at 10%, so I've gone straight into the 20% test. And I'm going to use my air that I normally have going into the nozzle to keep the fumes blown away. And there we go. It's a 20% burn. Run. Pause. 30%. Get the air blowing. As you can see, there's no rush with this program. There we go. Now this is the 80% test. Let's just take a look at the results. Now I think it's fairly obvious that we're starting off from the right hand side here and this one is 20%. Remember the one that should be here, 10%, didn't actually fire the laser. So this is 20%, 30%, 40%, 50%, 60%, 70% and 80%. Now, when you look at that 60% one, how much different is that one to the 70 and 80%? So as you can see, they form virtually a straight line graph up to 60%. And then that last two, 70 and 80%, have added nothing. So, basically, we're not going to run this machine over 60%. Otherwise, we should be using a technical phrase, overdriving the tube and shortening its life. OK, well, I hope there's some good lessons come out of that. And as you've seen, it's not difficult for you to characterise your own machine.